Good morning, everybody. We are back on the cruise ship. It's Legend in Mali, and we are coming at you today from the Grand Classica on the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. Now, this is a different cruise. This is not one of your, your you know, your big four, your big five cruise lines. This is a small cruise line, uh, notable for like, you know, your, if you get a free cruise with a timeshare presentation or you buy it on Groupon for like $200, this is the cruise you get. So in this video here, we're gonna show you all around the ship and uh, what the Grand Classic has to offer, what your cruise would kind of be like. This cruise, this ship does nothing but two night sailings out of West Palm Beach over to Grand Bahama Island, which we're now at over here in the background. And we're gonna show you around. We're actually on the third ever sailing on this ship for the Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line. Uh, this was an old Costa ship that sailed, I think in the, the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. but uh, now it's here out of West Palm. And we're gonna show you guys all around. We're starting off with the pool deck here. Um, we're, at, we're, at, we're at the island day, so there's not a lot of people on board. Also, our sailing is not very popular. We're here on like a Tuesday in the middle of April, so this ship must be sailing at like 30 or 40%. But your pool area, it's, um, it's obviously, it's an older ship. The ship's like 30 years old, but it's still got some nice areas. I really like the, uh, the big cuddle pod kind of things. And then uh, they've got this great like runway. It kind of looks like a model runway. Mm -hmm. I'm on the second level, but it would be a really great place to get some sun. And it's a good place to watch like cool activities. When yeah, they, like, they, they games. do different games or like mm -hmm. sail away parties and things like that. So this is one strange part of the pool deck. They've got like this kind of small stairway to nowhere. We think this probably used to be like a waterfall kind of feature that would run, start there and run down towards that trough there. It has not been turned on all crew, so it's just been these awkward stairs to nowhere in the middle of the pool deck. I will say the back of the ship has very much of a classic uh, ocean liner feel with the very old-timey Titanic-esque smokestacks. So it does look like an older ship from the outside, but a lot of the interior sections have been remodeled. They're actually quite nice. You also do see the uh, the Costa logo all over the ship as it, you know, they have led to clear that off. Also, one disappointing thing, they have this wonderful popcorn style of lighting that goes across the whole entire length of the ship, but it has yet to be turned on, so that's kind of a bar. In the back of the ship here is the uh, the other pool area, and this is an adults only section. Not that there's a lot of kids on this boat. Uh, I know at least on our sailing, we've maybe seen like 10 kids on a boat that's pretty empty. Uh, you know, another smaller pool, but again, if you'd like to get sun and stuff like that, there's a lot, a lot of sun areas. Also, this is where you have the ship's hot tubs. The ship's hot tubs are over there in the very back of the ship, so you get a cool view from the hot tubs. Unfortunately, one of the two hot tubs is working today, but um, a kind of a neat area in the back. On deck eight and nine is the uh, Legends Grand Theater, yes, my own theater, and this is where they do their performance shows on the ship. Uh, last night it was just a singing and dancing kind of show with no no real theme or set pieces or anything like that, South Beach Nights or something like that. You know, it was just your, your traditional singing, dancing cruise ship show. Not really interesting to me as there was no, there was no plot, there was no storyline. It was interesting because they had um, new music and like 1990s Spanish music. Yeah, like Bailamos and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I do like the <laughs> Santana. I do like the theater on the, the side. They have mosaics, like uh, they give like a very Cirque du Soleil kind of uh, French clown vibe. And then tonight there's a different show. There's some sort of a magic show and dancing show called Voodoo Fever. This is also where they do their comedy show. But unlike most cruise ships, this is kind of a kick in the pants. The comedy show is an upcharge here on the Grand Classica, and it's I think it's like 13 bucks if you want to go see the late night comedian. So that's um, you know a little bit of more of a nickel and dime thing than most cruise lines. On deck nine is La Playa Plaza, which is kind of the, the shopping area of the ship. This is where you can buy, you know, your photos. If you, if you like photos, we don't normally buy photos, but a lot of people do, and I can see that. Um, this is where we do most of our shopping, the duty-free liquor store. The, their prices are okay. I would say their prices on liquor is not as good as most of the major cruise lines, but they're still better than your liquor store home, so it's worth going. Uh, if you buy three bottles, you get 25% off, and that's mix and match too, so I think we might buy we might buy a crown apple, and I think there's a Cardi raspberry, mm -hmm. and then one more. Interesting thing is, as you can still tell, we're on the third. There yeah, like whatever this store was, shops. it's definitely not what it's going to be, mm -hmm. as it's uh, under heavy construction. So when you go on this ship, it might be something different. Also, in addition to shopping up here, is where you get your some of your upcharge uh, dining areas. The Grand Cafe is the uh, coffee bar which is if you want to get your fancy Starbucks style coffees and cappuccinos, espressos, things like that, this is where they have their press. They also have an upcharge gelato and snacks area. About $4 or About so. About four bucks, yeah. Um, some comfy couches. Over here on the other side is a slice above, and this is uh, the ship's pizza establishment. 
Unfortunately, again, unlike most other cruise lines where they have a, you know, sort of a free pizza area, the pizza place is an upcharge. But I will tell you one pro tip, this area is where they have their wine tasting on day one, and that was an absurdly good value. 12 bucks got you all the wine you could drink for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. You also got free pizza from the bar. I don't even like wine, and I took advantage of this and drank, you know, a significant amount of wine. And you're drinking nice wine too. These are wines that they're trying to, you know, the idea is like you taste one of the wines and you buy a bottle for dinner. But, you know, you don't have to buy a bottle for dinner. Just come here and drink for 45 minutes. This was at 3.30 on day one of the ship. And that's been one of my highlights, mm -hmm. I think, for the whole ship. Definitely come here, do the wine tasting. You can learn about the different wines. It's really fun. You get to try the pizza for free with included. Yeah. And pizza's usually about $10. Yeah, nine nine fifty, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And then moving on. So that, that's a pro tip. Definitely do the wine tasting and on day pizza one. pizza was good. I don't pizza, know if it was yeah. worth the $10. It was, it was good. It was good, pizza. yeah. All right, so you do have a couple more shops over here. This is kind of your souvenir store. Um, and it's interesting where uh, the souvenirs are kind of uh, just general Bahamas stuff. So if you've ever been to like your, 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 your Joe Tourist shop in Nassau or something like that, it, you get a lot of the same stuff in here. And uh, not really any logo gear for the ship or things like that. Like for us, we love collecting like the ship ornaments of every ship we go on. That's something they don't sell here. They don't really sell anything with like the ship's name on it either or the, the cruise line but a more, um, more generic Bahamas stuff. Still not bad. And then over here on the right side is your another one of your duty-free shops. This is your jewelry and your perfumes and things like that. And watches. And watches. So you could buy a Garfield watch. Or your Mickey Mouse watch. And that's the uh, the Kyle Plaza, the shopping area. And, and again, this is something for a ship that's so old. It's a pretty nice looking area. Don't miss that wine tasting. That's fabulous. Great, great $12. The Yellow Elder is the ship's main dining room, and gotta say, this is way bigger than I thought it would be. I guess because our sailing is not very full, and we ate sort of in a side room, but this is the ship's main dining room. And I gotta say, I was pretty impressed with our food yesterday. Yesterday I had a, a, a barbecue French onion soup that was really tasty, and then I had a, a, a I guess it was a, a mustard rub beef with some really good sauce, cooked medium rare, and a really nice chocolate cake. I mean, the food, comparing it, it's definitely uh, comparable to other cruise lines, I would say. Like I thought our meal yesterday, I thought it was a better food than you'll get in a carnival main dining room. Uh, probably about to the level of Norwegian, not as good as your celebrity uh, Royal Caribbean or Disney Cruise Line. But the food was, is uh, in the main dining room was very good. We'll see how it is tonight. One thing that was kind of awkward is that they, uh, they advertised there's anytime dining on the website. And we signed up for anytime dining. And we were met by our very rude head waiter, mustache man, that uh, he, when we went up there and told him, hey, we have anytime dining. He's like, no, there's no anytime dining. And then we went back later and said, like, hey, we have anytime dining on our slip. He's like, okay, yeah, just coming right this way. So uh, the guest service from somebody in a leadership position was not good there. But uh, the food, wonderful. And the service was quick. Waiters were friendly. Uh, so, the service was really quick for yeah. uh, main dining room. Yeah, service was very really good. Quick. And the, uh, the food, well done. I, I, and that was only night one. We'll see what it is on night two. Obviously, we can't review night two's food because we haven't done that yet. So this very small area, this is what we were told was anytime dining. And it's where we ate last night. Up next on the tour is the Encore Lounge, and it's another very large space. You've got these cool, like a, a Model Easta kind of bronze statues around. And again, this is a very, very large lounge, big old bar. And uh, this awkward is stairs that goes <laughs> awkward to, stairs uh, for one floor. Yeah, goes uh, to a slice. This is where we saw um, there was a Donna Summer tribute singer here last night, and she was really good. Like not my style of music, but she was uh, she <laughs> very much in character, playing oh, the part. 100 in character. And, and then uh, it was cool too. She's very interactive with the audience, so she would start on stage and then wander around the work the whole room while she was singing her songs. It was a very entertaining act. Now let's talk a little bit about the drinks on the ship. The drinks are good, and holy crap, they are strong. I don't know if these bartenders aren't trained or they're trained to give really strong pours, but like their drinks are by far the strongest of any cruise ship I have ever seen. I'm a, a pretty good drinker myself, and I had a couple of them I was struggling to finish because they were just so strong. Like uh, we ordered, uh, not at this bar, but a different bar, we ordered a, uh, a Long Island, which they decided to make with a nine count of 151 rum and then sours mix as well as uh, Coke. That's not how you make a Long Island. But that drink was horrendously strong. I mean, you, you would get t if you finished that, you'd be destroyed, completely destroyed. We sort of uh, grabbed some lemonade and split it into two to make it drinkable, but uh, their drinks here are absurdly strong. Also, you could buy drink tickets. So for $70, 
you get uh, 10 drink tickets and they're good for any drink up to $12. And we definitely recommend doing that. Uh, we we split that yesterday between that and the wine tasting. We were we were pretty hammered. <laughs> Most drinks are about nine seventy five, ten of ten dollars. I will say one bummer: the uh, the drink coupons do not work in the martini bar because those drinks are thirteen dollars. But I mean, the drinking game on this ship is very very strong. And it's probably not good for beer either. Because yeah, it's not a great value beer, for beer. Yeah. But if you're a cocktail drinker or probably a wine drinker, uh, mm -hmm. the coupons would definitely be a way to go. So here's a shot of the Grand Classico from the outside. We're on the, the uh, area over in the Freeport. Just finished up the uh, shore excursion kind of time. But uh, that's what the ship looks like from the outside. Obviously, you can tell it feels like an older ship, but it's it actually, on the inside, it's a lot, lot nicer than it is on the outside. So everybody loves the buffet on the cruise ship. And the buffet here on the Grand Classico, probably not one of their strongest segments. We're here for lunch right now, and this looks good. They've got a carving station with turkey. Yeah, I would totally get me some of that. That looks good. Then over here, we have a uh, pasta with tomato sauce, black bean rice, vegetable curry, uh, either a fish or a chicken that doesn't have a sign on it. Uh, there's a jerk chicken, a couple other things. There's, um, there's a bread station over here. Now, this isn't running right now, but earlier in the day, this was a uh, pasta station. And this is my favorite place to get lunch. So if you go over here, there's guy making fresh made to order pasta. So we got a, like a pesto and, and nochi pasta that was really, really good yesterday. When we were there earlier in the day, over here you got some desserts. That looks good. Look at that fruit tart. There's a fruit tart. There's a Patola Marquise. So the dessert looks okay. Um, buffet has not been one of the stronger standpoints here. Buffet for breakfast was very good. Standard American breakfast buffet with an omelet station. But for lunch and dinner, it's been kind of weak. So I think this is probably my favorite part of the ship. And this is back on deck 10 at the back half of the buffet. First of all, right there, for lunch or dinner, that's where you get hot dogs and hamburgers and french fries, which unfortunately, as far as their buffet standard goes, might be my favorite foods as far as lunch or dinner buffet options. Especially the dogs and the fries are actually really strong. But the space, I love this space with the tree, and those things light up in the evening, and it feels very much redone in a quickly manner, like this was redone in the past few years. Um, at dinner, this becomes an upcharge restaurant known as the Rock Grill, which I'll tell you more about in just a moment. Now for dinner, their main upcharge restaurant is the Rock Grill, and it's kind of interesting. It kind of takes the idea of a, um, honestly the idea of like a melting pot, except bringing that to a cruise ship where instead of putting things in a pot, you put things on this molten hot lava rock here that's at like 700 degrees, and you all cook your own meats. This is an upcharge, and it's an a la carte dining experience, so you can get any of those entrees, but it's all a la carte. And uh, I'm not a big fan of paying extra on a cruise ship, but like, if you're here for a special occasion or a date night, it might be a good idea to try the rock grill. Real quick, this is what our lunch buffet looks like on day two. Um, fresh fries too, like these fries just came out of the fryer able to wrap our hot dog and cheese, so it's gonna be awesome. And then a couple different things. We got a, a fried pork, uh, grilled turkey with gravy. That's a barbecue chicken, Molly? A uh, jerk chicken. Jerky. Jerk chicken, which makes sense as we're in the Bahamas. Yeah. So um, the buffet for lunch and dinner, not so great. It, it's, it's edible, but it's not wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful is always a good thing. Edible. It works. It's better than, yeah, exactly. You get what you pay it for works. here. Also here in the buffet is the most awkward bathroom on the entire ship. It's the men's or women's room. <laughs> if anybody has to go, just go in there. <laughs> on deck five in the middle of the ship is the lobby, which you can see goes pretty much all the way up. And the lobby, unlike other ships, it's not really a useful space. Like this is not a space that's used for activities. This is pretty much where you come on board and where you can uh, go to guest services as well as shore excursions. There's guest services over here and uh, shore excursions is on the right. Not really a useful space, just really where you get on and get off the ship. Uh, also, when you get on the ship, you go right over here. That's where you can buy those drink coupons we talked about earlier. Also, weird sculpture things. On deck eight, right before you go into the theater, they have the uh, their martini bar. And this is uh, really good. They've got like, we did not try this because it was not included with the drink coupons. I think it's something we're gonna try tonight. They have, you could get six mini martinis for like $15 or big martinis for $13. 
and uh, they have so many martinis, guys. Like, they have this menu. It's not out here now, but this menu has like 30 or 40 different types of martinis in it. And all types, like classic. Dessert, dessert fruity, yeah. wacky. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also doubles as their piano bar. Like, uh, before the show and after the show, there'll be a guy over here playing the piano. And it's cool. He was a very, very nice guy. It was awkward because there was like three people in here awesome. yesterday when we were in here. So he was like kind of talking and playing to us. Where? But uh, it was, it was, um, he was good. It's more of your, uh, you're more of your, you're very much a lounge environment as you go to like, it's not your, your dueling pianos kind of sing along party bar, but you're more just sit around, have a cocktail, listen to music bar. If you're a gambler, the Paradise Half Puns Casino is going to be for you. Um, one thing I like about this, it is a smoke free casino. So that is a big plus as we, uh, we're not big gamblers, but we are non-smokers at all. So uh, it's, it's very nice that their casino is smoke-free, unlike many other cruise lines. Um, the casino is not, not so big. If you're into table games, I think you're going to be in luck. If you're a big slot machine person, you don't have quite as large of a selection. And again, you can see they're still sort of under construction, more or less, doing some different things. Um, they do have your table games. We're going to come in here later. we got some match play. Or we're going to come in here and try, try either blackjack or roulette and things like that. But again, if you're a gambler, they do have a gambling rewards program as well on this ship. Uh, they don't have a rewards program if you're just like a, a multiple return cruisers, but there is a one for the gambling. So uh, come on in here if you're a gambler, especially if you're a non-smoker, have some fun. Here at Deck 12 Forward, you've got a, another sun deck kind of area. Big space, uh, probably a really good place to watch, you know, your sail into a port or sail away over here. But you also feel like it's kind of a wasted space, like this would be a great area for the ship to have like a, like a mini golf course or something like that. And uh, obviously without having a sea day, as this ship only does two day cruises, you really don't need that much of a sun deck area because you get on board the boat and normally you're not out there sunbathing. And then on a day like today, most people are at the island on the beach in the marketplace, so you don't really need this space. At the highest point of the ship, the highest guest area is the Crow's Nest Sports Bar. And it's kind of cool. You get here from going up these spiral staircases here on deck 12. You can also, no, no you can, yeah, we're on deck 14. You can get there from deck 12. You can take the elevator as well. And uh, this is a really cool space. It's got this big 360 lounge kind of thing. And uh, you got windows all the way around. So again, it's a, this would be a great place if you're in Sail Away and it's kind of inclement weather. Um, it's also a little weird because it says it's the sports bar, but there's not a single TV. I'm guessing this is an area where it's, um, you know, again, it's their third cruise with this ship and they are <laughs> making improvements. This also in the evening becomes the ship's nightclub. Last night there was a really fun glow party in here where they came in and uh, there's you know a dance floor playing your normal top 40 music and your you know your line dancing and things like that, but the uh, the entertainment staff was in here and they were giving out all sorts of glow stuff. So we got a, you know glow sticks and uh, glow necklaces, all free. So that was really nice. Uh, drinks were good in here as well. Today is a retro party. Yeah, today's a retro party. Retro. So glow party on night one, retro party on night two, and here you can see the area that's not quite finished yet, as this is going to have games and stuff as well, and uh, unfortunately the games are not yet connected. Um, this is new. These did, were not here yesterday. It's going to be some sort of like a racing arcade game. You've got uh, air hockey, and then over here is half set up ski ball. Um, the thing is, like, I'm shocked to let people up here with these machines just sitting there, not put together. And uh, part of me is sad because, like, having a lot of drinks, ski ball would be really fun. And then there's the nerd in me, my mechanical engineering background. It's like, hey, somebody give me a screwdriver. I really want to put together a ski ball machine. So uh, that's kind of interesting. But uh, this space, I think it'll grow. I'm sure it's going to get some TVs to watch sports. And then it'll also double as the arcade up here, too. And it's going to have new games, which is always good. Plus, it's just a really cool space. I love the idea of the 360 lounge where you could uh, get the windows on all sides. And I enjoyed that the glow party. You could see it from the downstairs. You yeah, could see yeah. The glow. You could see the glow sticks <laughs> and stuff. And you could tell, like, oh, there's a party up there. One more interesting thing to note here about the nightclub is they let, they let all ages in. A lot of cruise ship nightclubs, you have to be, you know, 21 and over or 18 and over. This one, there are, you know, the kids and teens coming up to enjoy the glow party. So if you have kids and things like that, they could still come up here. It's not, you know, a, a raucous nightclub. Now, coming from the pool deck over here, uh, right on the runway area, if you want to go inside, there is a wacky door. And be sure to watch your step as it is, um, it's kind of, <laughs> watch your step and watch your head as there's a big latch and a low ceiling so like molly's going to demonstrate here and molly is not very tall <laughs> so uh you know be careful if you're coming to this entrance so we're up here on deck 12 and we got to show you this because you got the trippy uh never ending stairway kind of thing so looking down if you have like vertigo issues or fear of heights do not look over the side because it is a pretty trippy looking all the way down 
On deck 11 is the indulgent spa in the fitness center. So this area is where you get your, your massages and things like that. There's also a big gym in here. Uh, there's like a big steam room and an area for aerobics classes and things like that. Not gonna go inside because it's not really our thing, but uh, if you do like it, then they run all sorts of specials. So with it being an older ship, you do get to some dead ends. Like we're on one elevator section of deck 10 and to get to the buffet on deck 10, you need to go up these stairs, across the pool deck and then down. So you do get some of the, uh, the older ship quirks. On deck eight, they have what's called connect. So you could uh, you know, pay and get on the internet, that kind of thing. As there is not Wi-Fi on the ship right now, that's the only way started to connect if you're at the sea. And then it's cool, you can tell this is an older ship from a, a different area as they still have the coastal library, which means you get books in all different languages. Like this side, every book's in Italian. Even this creepy looking doll baby book. So this, <laughs> yeah, Chucky doll. type doll. So this is uh, all in Italian. And then you come over here and you get more books in different languages. You got uh, French, Portuguese, English, English, and Spanish. So it's uh, you know, definitely another one of those kind of, oh, that's kind of quirky and neat. You know, a nice place if you want a, a, a quiet place on the ship. This definitely qualifies as that. Also on deck eight, they have a couple of different card rooms as a, uh, one of the popular things for older crews is to come in here and play bridge and things like that, uh, dominoes. They have uh, you know, plenty of spaces if you're uh, somebody who likes to do that kind of thing. They have this giant area and then two smaller Yeah, the two rooms smaller on the ones on the other side. side. So they have elevators. They're just like the world's slowest elevators. Thankfully, there's not a lot of people on this ship, so uh, we have not had the problem. And they're but very I, small, too. They're small, but I love they have not changed over from the Italian ship. So get ready, guys. Forte Cinque, deck five. Forte Cinque. <laughs> it tells you the Italian name first, which I think is kind of neat. You know, gotta learn Italian numbers real well on the ship. So I think this is really nice. Right before you get off the boat to go into uh, uh, Grand Bahama Island, they have a little fruit punch and water station for when you go on or you get off. It's really awesome. <laughs> this ship does have some bizarre artwork on it. Last but not least, let's check out the stateroom here. We had an interior stateroom, uh, 4091. And uh, first of all, the stateroom's big. These are very large interior staterooms. I guess it goes hand in hand with kind of the older ship, but you got a, a big giant bed. It is an interior cabin, that feels like an interior cabin though, as there's a, <laughs> no, like, no kind of like fake window or anything like that, and very bland walls. It does kind of give you that closet vibe. But it is big because uh, in this cabinet here, it uh, there's another bed. So if you wanted to put a whole bunch of people in here, you could do that. One of my favorite parts of the stateroom, the chair of wheels. Chair of wheels. Uh, you have a TV with guess about eight channels or so. A little bit of bummer, no movie channel. I love the movie channel on the cruise ships. And there's no like, uh, also for the interior, unfortunately there's no like a mass cam or something like that to show you where you are. Uh, big mirror and a desk kind of area. You do have a uh, rather large bathroom for a cruise ship. The uh, the shower, not so great. It's a, a curtain and it's circular and the, the temperature was not consistent. You would put it on one temperature and it would very much vary. Uh, also weird, like the toilet, it looks like it's melted. Like, I, I don't know how that would happen, but it's, it, it's not some sort of liquid. That is how the toilet is. It is melted like that. And that's bizarre. But it is, uh, if you have a claustrophobia issue, the, uh, the bathroom's pretty large. All right, and that'll do it for our time here at the, uh, the Grand Classica. And it had some sort of, sort of hits and misses. There, first, overall, I really enjoyed my time. I feel like I got my money's worth. Um, I would recommend this cruise if you, uh, if you grab it on Groupon for like 200 bucks. I think it's a good deal. If you're looking for a uh, kind of a weekend getaway kind of thing, I think you're good. Also, you got to set your expectations lower. You know, you're, you're not paying Disney or Royal Caribbean prices. Don't expect Disney or Royal Caribbean kind of stuff. Um, you pay what you get. Yeah, you get what you pay for. Um, let's see, a couple of the, the highlights. I love the activities. There's a, always something to do, lots of musical acts. And, uh, you know, it, it felt like a larger cruise as far as the amount of activities went. A uh, show last night, not so good. show tonight was, I thought, was decent. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was kind of a superstition magic singing and dancing show. Right. Um, so I thought that was good. No I, plot still. No though. plot, yeah. Um, the activities from the simple games, and I like that uh, 
uh, instead of winning like keychains and stuff in the activities, you win free drinks, which is uh, you know uh, better than most cruise lines give yeah. you for your prizes. Yeah. So that was cool. I liked the glow party last night. Um, I, I love the music. There was a lot of different musical acts on the boat. Uh, I liked the main dining room food. I thought it was pretty solid. Uh, unfortunately, there are some low lights. The buffet food, not good. Breakfast. Bre okay. Yeah, breakfast. You can't screw up breakfast. Yeah. For but for like lunch and dinner, it's kind of like high school cafeteria food. Maybe worse than that, like prison food. <laughs> I've never been to jail, but it's kind of how I imagined prison food would be. No, high school cafeteria. Okay, high school very, cafeteria. Because very... um, it smells either really good, and then you look at it and you're like, ooh. <laughs> or you walk in and you're like, yeah, nope. Yeah, yeah, that, not one of their highlights. Um, I also thought the ship, for a ship that's like 30 years old, it didn't feel 30 years <laughs> old. A lot of really nice areas, like I love that back area of the buffet where it's like with the indoor tree and stuff like that, that's a beautiful space. Um, a bunch of the other bars and lounges. Um, some problems with like services and kind of things like that where you'd be like, hey, martini tasting is at three o'clock and you go to the martini tasting and they don't have the glassware and things like that. Yeah. Um, so these kind of like easy to fix problems that just kind of shows that they don't care enough to fix like things on the times guide that I found was kind of frustrating. Uh, so I mean, it, that's a simple fix too. That, that's, you know, it's a lazy, simple fix. Also, it's the kind of thing like there's only one show each night, but on the guide, it says there's two shows each night. And that might be because we're so low capacity here. Yeah, but still, even but if, yes. if, if you're running one show yeah. a night and the, like, we, we, we talked to the guys in the elevator that yeah. were in the show. They're like, hey, come see the show at 9. So then after they got out of the elevator, I talked to Molly. On the guide, it says like 7 and 9. I'm like, oh, I guess there's no show at 7 o'clock then. And sure enough, there was a sign. Yeah, like a technical, technical rehearsal. rehearsal. Yeah, it's stuff like that. And even though they don't go over the intercom and tell you like, hey, unfortunately, there's no show at 7. So if people plan their night based on the times guide, their evening could be thrown off. Um, and I feel like it's just lazy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no excuse for that. Um, another good thing. Chocolates on the pillow. I like that. We only got it tonight. We didn't get it yesterday. No. But uh, still a plus. Um, so overall, there, there were hits and misses on the ship. Um, but overall, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I probably wouldn't go back on the, the Grand Classica here, but I would recommend that people go on the ship, if that makes sense. I guess it's kind of a weird review. It's, um, I think it's great if you've never done a cruise before. Yeah. To go on your first cruise, if you're going on like a Walt Disney World vacation and you want two days of cruise ship, I think it's a good ship for that. And then, you know the value for your money. It, it's it's not expensive. Though you do have to be warned that they will try to nickel and dime you, like yeah. try to upsell you on everything. So be prepared for that. Yeah, and just say no. Yeah, exactly. Um, I got the beverage plan. Uh, the the drinks was strong. Holy mm. crap! You don't need two coupons for two people. No, like, and we we can drink. One, Trust me, guys, we can drink. Yeah, buy one coupon. Please. And uh, some of those drinks and the pours were just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, they 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 were the stiffest drinks on the sea. I would say. Yeah. So that was another highlight for me. Like you get, definitely got some bang for your buck there. Um, so overall, I enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions about the Bahamas Paradise Grand Classic, just leave them in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. You know, it is a two-night cruise. A lot of stuff, a lot of activities. I, I had a good time. Um, I'd recommend it. You know, uh, definitely not the best of cruise lines, but it's still, I think it's uh, it's worth, probably worth your time. And there's just a towel on all today. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Without you guys watching these cruise videos, we would not be able to go on so many cruises. So, I, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you guys. And uh, see you next time.